head coach, Kaylin DeBoer, in the house as you guys arrive here in Houston. What's the big message, big points of emphasis for your group to handle this week? Yeah, just be them. Uh, do what they do and uh, everything that's got us to this point. So uh, we've got a lot of maturity on this team and uh, they know how to handle these big moments. I know a big slogan for you guys the last handful of weeks has been jobs not done. What will it require in a battle of undefeateds for a national title? Yeah, it'll require uh, great preparation, and that preparation leads to confidence, and confidence leads to success on uh, on game day. So uh, we're working hard to make sure that that preparation's intact and uh, where it needs to be. Enjoy this. Thanks for the time. And the Washington Huskies all getting set to take the podium, ladies and gentlemen. How are you guys doing? Oh, let me get one. Okay. Hi, Mom. Yeah, my parents they uh, caught a red eye last night uh, with a lot other, a lot more other people. My family, I have a bunch of people coming up for this game. I'm really excited. Oh, for sure. I mean, they said what they said. We did what we did, and here we are. So, it's no much, not much else to say. Uh, yeah, I think we just got to play uh, as one on the on the O line. You know, there's five of us, but Coach Huff does a really good job of making sure that we all play as one. And uh, they're a really good team. And like you said, they're going to bring the heat. So we got to make sure we're ready. Can you talk about the way you guys have kind of gelled on the last couple of years of the season? I mean, think back to you know, August and September and where you are now. Yeah. Line. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, we just all got closer off the field. So um, doing stuff like going to get stuff to eat and, together or playing the video game together just little stuff you know things that college students do that uh, we were able to kind of get closer by and then you know ultimately it uh, translated onto the field so so yeah of course I mean I think the opportunity as a whole just as an offensive line uh, we're really excited for it I mean Really well coached, got some really good guys on that defensive line. I mean, I'm just excited to, to go out there and compete. So I know they're going to bring their A game, so we got to make sure we do as well. What do you say to the people who say you slot more as a guard than as a defensive end? For me, I don't, I don't care what I play. Uh, any team that's willing to take a chance on me, I'll play whatever position, whether that's offensive line, whether that's a running back, or fullback. I mean, put me wherever, I'll, I'll, I'll do the job. Oh, for sure. We watch a lot of their film. I mean, personally, I watch a lot of their film. Um, it's cool to just turn on the tape and, and watch some of the guys on that offensive line, especially Trent Williams. You know, it's really hard to emulate and put some of his stuff that he does on the field into my game just because of how talented he is. You know, you can't really 
like replicate some of the stuff that he does. But, but of course, I mean the 49ers, I mean any team, like I said, uh, whoever decides to take a chance on me, man, I'm I'm willing to give, whatever. So. Sacks given up against Texas. Penix had a clean pocket for almost all of the game. What were you guys able to do so well? I mean, just play together as one. We knew uh, going into the game that they had a really solid interior defensive line and their edges do a really good job. They're really all well coached. And yeah, I mean, the biggest thing all season really is just that we're all able to play as together as one and we're all able to go out there and, and know what we're all thinking. Like, I know what Roger's thinking. I know what uh, Parker's thinking. We're just making sure, and Parker does a really good job of making sure that we're all on the same page. So. So yeah, I mean, we, we executed executed the game plan as best as we could and came out with the win. This offensive line has held up well all season, won the Joe Moore Award. What's left to prove? National championship, man. That's that's the only thing on our mind. Um, I mean, all the awards are really cool, but this is the this is the one we wanted. This is the one we've been working for since, I mean, since this since we came here. I mean, this is what we wanted. This is why we came to U Dub and for opportunities like this. So so yeah, I'm excited. What needs to happen Monday night in order for you to look up at the scoreboard at NRG Stadium after the game and be a national champion? Um, just keep on doing what we've been doing um, since the beginning of the season. I mean, 14 games in, um, one thing that I think this team's really good at is just doing their job um, at a really high level. And I think that's what we got to do. We don't got to do anything special. We don't got to do anything crazy. The coaches aren't asking anything crazy of us. So we just got to go out there and execute. Hi, I appreciate your time. Can you speak to Michael Penix as both a player and person? What has stood out most about him since, since your arrival or since his arrival? Uh, I would say uh, he's just a true-born leader. I mean, you just seen how much he's grown as a, as a vocal leader for sure last year. Um, you know, he was still a little bit in his shell, uh, just trying to get comfortable with everybody. But this year he's taken big leaps, and he's – He's done a really great job of making sure that uh, he holds everyone accountable, especially himself. That's what we see is he holds himself more accountable than he does everybody else. And uh, we respect that from him. And so, so yeah, I mean, he's a great guy, stand-up guy. And so, yeah. How has the, the relationship with the entire offensive line in general, from your perspective, um, the relationship between the offensive line and Michael Pitt, how has that in your mind evolved? Um, honestly, just learning more about the guy, it, it, it makes it a lot easier to, to block for him. You know what I mean? Just knowing how much he's gone through in his career and in his life and him being able to uh, be vulnerable and, and share that with us has really been, I think, the key thing that, that helps us go out there and, and want to block for, for a guy like him. So um, he, he's the most humble guy I've ever met. And uh, with all the success and praise that he gets, he makes sure that he, you know, he gives credit to us. So um Great guy. I mean, it's, yeah. I wouldn't want to, you know, go out there uh, and battle with nobody else. So, thank you so much. Of course. Victor, besides uh, individual talent, what makes this offensive line so good? Um, I think we're just we're all, we're brothers off the field. I think that's the biggest thing that that brotherhood, that unity that we have off the field, just by. Uh, hanging out with each other, just doing stuff that normal college students usually do. Uh, like I told the other guy that was here before, I mean, we play the game together, we, we go out to eat together, we do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I think that's just what separates uh, a lot of us. I mean, just the fact that we, we love each other on and off the field, no matter what happens in the games. Like, I got all their, got, I got all their backs, and they for sure got mine. So. Michigan had, I think, six sacks against Alabama. What, what stands out on tape about their you know, defensive line and, and how they put pressure on? Uh, they're just very disruptive. I mean, they, they get in the backfield. Uh, they make plays, and we just got to make sure that we go out there with the right mindset and uh, execute the game plan that the coaches have out for us. So, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, it means the world. I mean, growing up, um, watching this game every Monday, you know, you, you always dreamed about being here. And um, I came to UW because I thought, you know, we one day get here. And I mean, here we are. Uh, it took five years. This is my fifth year. But I, I wouldn't want the journey to go any other way than, than how it did. So I'm just really excited for this opportunity, uh, especially for this team and these coaches. Uh, they've just been 
great overall. I mean, I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't want to go to battle with anybody else. So. I mean, it's awesome. Uh, like I said, growing up, just, just watching games like this, you've always wanted to be a part of it. And, and here we are. It's really surreal. I mean, I can't, I don't think it's really hit me that we're really playing in the national championship. And I don't think it will until after the game. Uh, just because we're kind of in the heat of the moment and, and in the midst of all the chaos. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this opportunity once again. It's, it's super, super cool to be here. Michigan's defensive line loves to rotate a lot of guys in and out. They kind of do really big rally groups. Have you faced a team like that in your career that rotates as much as Michigan does? Yeah. Uh, we, we played Oregon, uh, and they play like eight guys on the edge. I, I faced so many people in, in one game. It was crazy. But, uh, yeah, we all of them are threats, you know, for Michigan. All of them are great players. All of them are really, really well coached. So we've got to make sure we're ready for all of them. And you guys had about a month to repair for Texas and just kind of sitting and analyzing one team. And now you have just seven days to analyze Michigan. What has that difference been like for you? And do you appreciate and like kind of more of a normal game week schedule with seven yeah. days versus a full month? For sure. I mean, uh, getting into the rhythm of things during the season, you know, you kind of have a set schedule on, on what I'm going to watch on this day, what I'm going to watch on this day. Uh, Texas, it was kind of hard to, to kind of break that up with so, so much time. But yeah, uh, I kind of just got back into the rhythm of things and, and uh, made sure that I just stuck to what, I was, what I've been doing all season. So, so yeah, appreciate it. I think the biggest thing for me was just um, just not listening to the outside noise. Uh, for me, like my first three years here at Washington, uh, some thing, things just didn't go the way that I planned them, that I planned it to go, and it, the timing wasn't on my timing. So I had to just make sure that I kept my head down and just keep on going. I think that's the biggest thing, and just um, with a lot of the guys that come in early, they, they think they, they can come in and, and play right away, but it's – it, a lot of people, you know, get reality checks really fast, and uh, college is a lot different than high school. So I think uh, just over the years, I would say just uh, being more patient. I think that's the uh, best way to say it. So. I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, just as a team, I think we're all kind of we all have the same mindset. We all have the same goal, and I think that's what makes us so special and that's why we're here is that no one's fighting against you know the vision coach grub always talks about the vision and and uh, they set out the plan and we just have to be there to execute it so i think we're just um doing everything that they're, they're telling us to do and you know we, we've gotten here so i just think um, the preparation that the coaches expect from us and that they put on us and make sure that we're ready to go is, is, is next level. I don't think anyone's doing what we're doing uh, to prepare for these games and the time that we put in and uh, as a whole. So I'm, I think uh, he does a really good job of demanding that from us. So what's up, Asa? How you doing? Oh, for sure. In the games, you, the, there's always those those plays in the game that, you, you know, when they get called in the huddle, it's like, uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> like, um, I mean, it's bad to say that because every play is supposed to be like that. But, you know, there's those certain play calls that you run during practice like, oh, yeah, this is, this is going to be one of them. This is going to be the one. So, I mean, he just does a really good job of making sure that we're prepared for those moments and that uh, he has a lot of trust in us and we have a lot of trust in him to, to do his job and, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, the one word that I would use for Michigan's defense is just disruptive, uh, especially in the backfield. Uh, their D-line, their linebackers, their, their front seven is really well, well coached. I mean, they play together. I think that's the one thing that, that stands out for me. And uh, I'm just super excited for this opportunity to go out there and and prove to the world what we we know is possible. So. Um, 
So the biggest thing that I wanted to do, because the decision ultimately was, was up to me, but I had other people helping me out, especially my parents. Uh, my mom did not care about football. She, she was like, go finish school. That's her thing. She, she wasn't even worried about uh, whether I was getting drafted here or there. Or, or f her, her biggest thing was, was just making sure that I went back to school to, to finish. So that was her stance on it. My dad, you know, he just, of course, went with my mom. So uh, their, their decisions kind of helped me. Um, and <clears throat> they've never led me astray. So. Um, I'm here because of them, and I'm, I'm so happy that I made the decision that I did. So, so yeah. Um, I think my I put in a, the CAC for the CAC grade, and I got like a third round or come back to school type of thing. So everything worked out the way it was supposed to. So um, I wouldn't change my decision. I, I don't regret it. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited that um, I did come back, and uh, we're here. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah, shout out Mont Lake Futures. I mean, those guys have done a really good job of helping us out, especially um, the guys up here. Um, so, so yeah. Are there any players that you guys have identified in film on this year's team that you guys got to watch out for? Uh, I think all of them. I mean, they wouldn't be in the college football playoffs if, if, if all of them weren't great players, well coached, you know. Um, I, we worry more about the front seven, so I would just say all those guys. I mean, the rotating guys as well, those guys are really talented. Um, for me, I've watched a lot of film on number 17, number 32, 8, 5. They're, they're linebackers. They've got really good interior guys, number 55, 78. So we just got to be ready for all of them. I mean, they're, they're all talented group, and I know they're really well coached. So uh, like I've been saying, man, I know they're going to bring their A game, so we got to make sure we're, we're there. Uh, yeah, I mean, ever since the beginning of fall camp, uh, coaches told us that it was 161 days from the beginning of fall camp that uh, that we could be here, and we are. I mean, I, I just think from the beginning of the season, we've all had that belief that um, we were going to come here and we are going to be here. We just had to make sure we were prepared and go 1-0 and every single week. Uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, I can't really point out a specific game or whatever, but I just think that that's what – makes this team really good is that we're we were able to go one and oh 14 times and here we are one more time to go one and oh so super excited about the opportunity you guys have been playing in high stakes these last few months you in three of your last five games determined by the way you just had a fighter against texas last week just one score how do you guys avoid I think just keeping the same mindset that we go into every single game, no matter who we play. I think this team is just really resilient in that uh, no matter what the score is, uh, we've been able to come out with the win, and, and that, that's all that matters, whether it's by three, whether it's by 40. And I think that's what uh, helps us out in, in those games that come down to the wire is that we've been in that position before. So uh, I wouldn't doubt that, you know, that, that might be another thing that happens on Monday. So. Um, I would just say the what made us so close, especially the older guys, and is the adversity that we've been through. Uh, we've been through three head coaches now since I've been here, and I would I would just say that the one thing that's helped us out, especially me, is that we were able to keep our O line coach, Coach Huff. So he's been through, you know, all the all the adversity that we've been through, and I think that's just what makes us closer, and that we can kind of pass that message on to the the younger guys that. Not everything's going to go the way that you plan it. Not everything's going to go uh, on your timing. So you just got to make sure that you're always prepared for, for your moment. And no matter when that moment is, um, you seize that opportunity. So, yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> personally, yeah, a lot of these games that come down to the wire, I feel like it adds another year to my life. 
Oh man, it's very stressful. Trust me, it's it's watching that on the sideline, uh, especially during the Texas game. That last drive, it kind of it sucks for me because oh, it sucks for the offense because we want to be out there for that, those final moments. But uh, we had all trust in our defense that they were gonna seize that that opportunity and make those plays when needed. And yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, that stress <laughs> it, it comes with a, a lot of um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, oh, no, it, yeah, it, it feels like it takes away to, from my life. But, I mean, uh, no matter how the, how these games go by, I mean, all that matters is that we, you know, we came out with the win, so. Uh, I did not know that. Uh, I, I think he's mentioned it a little bit, but, um, yeah, I, I, that 2021 year is, is, is really hard to talk about because there's a lot of things that happened that weren't in our control. You know what I mean? So, um, I didn't really play that. I didn't really play much that year either. So I can't really speak for how the offense like grooved and how the old line grooved out there. But, um, I mean, here we are, you know, here we, like, yeah, I'm. When he got on campus and started the game, I go on to you at some point. This guy is probably the best he's going to be. What's the best? Oh, for sure. Uh, 2022 spring ball, first day of practice. I mean, just seeing that guy sling the ball, it was ridiculous. And I'm like, who is this guy? I mean, of course, I had known him for three months at that point, but I'm just like, damn, this, this guy's really good. Um, and I, I think. The thing that helped us kind of gel together as a team was that um, he got out of, he got out of his comfort zone. Um, he was able to kind of uh, be that vocal leader that we needed him to be, and he took that role head on. And I mean, he, he we wouldn't want to be blocking for anybody else but him. So. I would say a really special moment that I'll always remember Mike by is uh, last year during our wa the Washington State game. We had chapel on Friday night, and um, our, our chaplain had asked the seniors if they wanted to come up and talk, and uh, he was the first guy to step up, and he really, right there, it was when he told us that story because I had not known um, about his recent history of injuries and stuff that he's been through. and. Um, for him to be vulnerable and share that with us was, was really awesome, and I'll, I'll never forget uh, the trust in, that he had in us to confide. I mean, just tell us that story. I mean, uh, I wouldn't say it made me look at him different, but just, just kind of just having more respect for the guy and, um, and kind of just listening to the stuff that he always preaches to us and, and kind of holds us accountable and knowing that he's been through a lot. So. Uh, it was our last game of the season, so it was November. I think it was the day after Thanksgiving was when he had told us. No, 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 uh, last year, 2022. Yeah, yep. Uh, real quick, you mentioned Coach DeVore's element. I mean, 61 days for the national championship. Did he count that down every day? Or? Coach Grubb did, yes. Coach Grubb. Yeah, every, after every uh, game on Saturday, on Sunday, he would always say, he would always point at the, the 161 days on that slide. You can go ask him. I, yeah, he's he's a madman, but in a good way. Of course. It means everything. I mean, um, a lot of people have been praising us about these individual awards, the Joe Moore, uh, but I think this was the biggest reward you could ever get in college football. I mean, who wouldn't want to play in this position? Uh, I'm just super excited for this opportunity, man. I, I just can't wait to go out there and, and prove to the world what we've been working for and what we've we've all believed that we could do. So. I mean, that moment was so special. Uh, we had a little Heisman watch party, uh, and no one knew. No one knew that he was going to do that, but. Uh, Honestly, I wasn't surprised that he would do something like that just because of who he is and what kind of leader he is for this team. And um, I mean, 
yeah, like I said, him doing stuff like that is not surprising to me just because of the fact that um, he's so humble even through all the praise that he does get. I mean, I bet that's all stressful, but at the end of the day, he always gives praise to us, and um, that's just the natural born leader that he is. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, we had 30 days to kind of prepare for the Sugar Bowl. So I would say I was really prepared for that game just because I had so many days. Uh, for me, it was kind of watching the same things over and over, just making sure that I knew the, the game plan stone cold. So um, this week, you know, we have, it's back to a, the regular week. So, I mean, I kind of already had um, a routine that I gone into uh, for every game, kind of just what I'm going to watch on certain days. So... Um, yeah, I just kind of have to do it a little bit quicker. I don't have 30 days. So um, kind of watching a lot of film every day, every night before I go to bed and just making sure that I'm prepared for the moment. So. I hate to ask you to think about the big picture and obviously you don't have the answer, but like big picture and, and the scope of your life, what does this mean to you and to do with your teammates? I mean, how do you possibly put that in words? Um, I'm just so happy that I came back. That's <laughs> one of the biggest things because uh, I get to play with guys like these two. Our center, Parker Brailsford, and Nathaniel Kleppel, my left guard. My boy Raj, shout out my boy Julius. I mean, the memories that we made this year is is something you just can't pay for. I mean, really, at the end of the day, it's it's something that it means so much to me, and I'm just so glad that I was able to, to come back and experience this with these guys, and uh, I got so much love for these boys. So. Um, First off, we got to make sure that we're on the same page. And uh, my boy Parker Brailsford, uh, he makes sure that he does that for us. And uh, just making sure that me and, and Nate and we're on the same page as well. Um, and I just think that the biggest thing that separates us is that we're able to play as one, and we're all making sure that we're we're always on the same page. So. Uh, just attacking them because we on we see it on film that uh, these guys are really good and that they make a lot of plays and that they're very disruptive. Uh, but these guys uh, made sure that the the game plan was to attack them and make sure that we got them out of their game. So, uh, yeah, I mean whatever the game plan had planned out for us and what whatever plays Coach Grubb called, I mean we just had to make sure that those two were taken care of and uh, these guys did a really good job of doing that. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, we tried our best. I mean, it's not on us. All, all, a lot of it's not on us. He does a really good job of making sure he moves his feet and he gets out the pocket when he needs to. And uh, so it, it's, it's it's a collective effort. And uh, I'm just glad that we came out with that win. So, of course. I mean, it, it's just crazy that it's you know, kind of done for me. I mean, I, I've always wanted to play in the Pac-12 uh, growing up on the West Coast. Um, I didn't look outside of the Pac at, during recruiting. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's kind of good to, to be here and, and represent, you know, what that era and that legacy left. And so, so yeah. Uh, I do. I mean, it, we spoke on it a lot during last week, just kind of people, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, it is for sure a real thing. I think so. Uh, after the game, uh, there's <laughs> an interview that I did not know was going to be out there. Uh, me just kind of shouting out ESPN and <laughs> uh, just, I mean, yeah, just not a lot of people. A lot of people seem surprised after we beat Texas. You know what I mean? And, um we weren't. That's the thing. I mean, a lot of people on the West Coast that we've played um, weren't surprised. So, it, yeah. I did not know he was here. That's crazy. I mean, of course. How you doing? 
Good. Doing good. Yeah. I just hate waiting. I'm really bad at waiting. So you could. What's up? <laughs> I have not. Uh, I hope they come up here soon, but no, I have not. <laughs> I mean, the excitement that went through that locker room was crazy. Uh, we were trying to celebrate that game, but we all kind of knew that winning that game wasn't just about winning that game. It was trying to get here. So I think, um, yeah, I mean, I was really excited. So. Tell me about this Michigan team. Looking at the film from the scout, do they remind you of anybody that you played? I don't think so. I mean, I think this will be uh, – I said this last week, but I think this will be the best front seven that we go against, just in terms of how disruptive they are in the backfield and um, how well coached they are. And so we just got to make sure that we're prepared for all the all the things that they're going to throw out come Monday. I did not. No. Uh, I remember a couple guys that that are now playing at Michigan that were there last – oh, two years ago. Was it two years ago? Yeah, yeah. Um, some of the guys that are now playing, and um, I remember those guys playing uh, two years ago. So, I mean, other than that, I mean, I mean, of course we won – I mean, of course we lost. So that le leaves a salty taste in our mouth. But um, this is a whole different team. It's a whole new team. So I'm, I'm just really excited for this game, this opportunity at hand. Um, I'm just not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised that we're the underdogs. I mean, that's the position we want to be in, man. That's the position that we've been in all year, 14 games into it. So what's one more? You know what I mean? So I'm just excited for this game. And, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Uh... I, I personally don't, yeah, I personally don't like doing stuff like this, but <laughs> here I am. Um, I'm wondering, how many players on this team would you say had a decision on that last year? Um, I would say about 10, or, or maybe less, I'm not sure, but around there. And almost everybody came back. Yeah, I think everyone did everyone. that had the opportunity to leave, so. So first, like, why did you decide to go back? Uh, from a lot of the people that I love and trust, um, we all just came to the conclusion that the best decision was to come back. I mean, for me, the biggest thing was um, having the opportunity to play in games like this. Uh, for my parents, their biggest reason why they wanted me to come back is because they wanted me to finish school. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the collective effort and the collective talking, it, that was the decision that was made, so. Yeah. Yeah, um, I would say the day before the banquet, Mike had texted me asking me what, what I was thinking. Um, and then the day of the banquet was when he announced that he came back. Um, and that was a big, um, that was one of the biggest like influences on why I came back for sure. Just wanted to block for the guy at least one more time. I mean, because I knew exactly what kind of leader he was and, and where he could take us. So. What was that? How big of a part is this team, of this team's story is this team? Oh, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of the younger guys make fun of us, but... Um, Are the younger guys like fourth-year seniors? Like no, like, I, I think we're just... A lot of the younger guys make fun of us for being old uh, because I'm in my fifth year. Like, my locker mate is, is 17 years old, Austin Mack. Like, what? What are you talking about? I'm six years older than my locker mate. It's crazy. But, yeah, I mean, the experience that we've all, we all have, it, it helps us a lot going to games like this knowing that uh, no matter what goes on in the game that you got to make sure to keep even kill and uh, stay level-headed because there's always ups and downs to a football game I mean Michigan's going to make plays we just got to make sure we make more so last thing for me y'all have all been together for a very long time there's a couple transfers from the younger players but this roster stayed together mm -hmm. what's allowed that to happen in this era when there's so many players I mean just the love for each other um, 
especially the the fifth and sixth year guys. Uh, the amount of head coaches that we've been through is is, is is pretty tough. I mean, losing guys to the transfer portal. I mean, that's what makes us all close is that we were able to stick through all the adversity. So, so yeah, I mean, that, that's what helps us win games on Saturday and was ho hopefully going to help us win games on – win that game on Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah, that decision during that – after that 2021 year, during that month while we at home, I uh, had a lot of conversation with my parents, and um, there was a lot of talks about you know, maybe maybe getting out of here and going somewhere else and playing somewhere else. But uh, for some reason, I had a gut feeling that just stick it out, maybe for three months, and if you don't like it, during 2022 uh, spring ball, get out. But when they came in uh, – they chose the right guy for the job, man. And I, I think that's just, for me, I'm, I'm very religious, and I think that's just God God was telling me that, you know, you're right where you need to be. So, yeah, I mean, having them is, is awesome, and they've just done a really good job of keeping that or bringing back that culture that Coach Pete had when I first got there. Um, that's exactly why I stayed. So. Uh, I mean – Things that are run day to day, it's kind of the same no matter what. But I would just say that the culture that in, was brought back in the locker room was was special. I mean, he reminds me so much of Coach Pete just because of how family oriented he is and uh, how much he treats us like. No matter who, where you play, no matter what where you at on the depth chart, like no one gets treated any different than the other. So, um, shout out to Coach DeBoer, man. <laughs> He's the goat. What moment? I think I would say during the winter of 2022, we kind of were going through some ups and downs as a team, just trying to uh, trust in, in the new coaching staff. You know, that's how it's always going to be. But I think fall camp 2022 is when they really kind of kind of cemented that uh, what they wanted to in place in, in this team. And uh, the, the good thing about it was that we all had come from uh, a coach that, you know, had already – had the same morals that, that he did so it was kind of easy to buy into uh, what he was preaching because we knew that he wasn't just all talk he was gonna he was gonna do exactly what he, he was he was talking about so for sure um i said this last week but it kind of changes week to week this is this will probably be the best front seven that we go against all year uh, the one word that I describe this team as is, is very disruptive um, in the backfield. Like like you said, I mean, seven sacks, however many it was, um, against a really good Alabama team is is something to talk about. And we just got to make sure that we're we're prepared and we're ready to, to execute that game plan that Coach Huff and Coach DeBoer and Coach Grubb have for us. So, they just line up in some really creative. They just line up in really creative ways. It's really hard to, to pick out who's coming or uh, who's dropping in coverage. And uh, Yeah, they just have some really crazy ways of lining up that we don't really see too much. Uh, but our, our, our coaches are prepared, and they've prepared us, so, so we're ready to go. How can the scout team get you guys ready for local uh, I think we have the best scout team in the country. I mean, those guys do a really great job of making sure that we're prepared. Um, especially the guys that I go against. I've been going against them for two years. They know they know my tendencies. I know theirs, but they do a really good job of making sure that I'm prepared for Saturday. And um, Yeah, they're, they're really important, especially in games like this where we need really good looks, and they've done a really great job of doing that. Um, I wouldn't say that... Uh, the moment that we, I had, kind of realizing that was was on the field. It was kind of off. I had told the story earlier. Was that um, during our our last game last year during our Washington State our rivalry game, uh, we were away on a Friday night um, during our chapel. He had uh, stepped up and kind of talked about his testimony and his story, and that was the first time I've ever heard of it. And you know, you kind of just, uh, like I said, I don't really look at him any different, uh, just because. He's been through that, but just having that respect for him and, 
and kind of listen to him, listen, listening to the words that he says a little bit, you know, deeper and kind of knowing where he had been, what, knowing what he had been through, kind of respect that guy. I mean, he, he's crazy. I mean, he shows that on the field, but uh, I think the, the the biggest thing for us, why we follow him so much, is that because we know him off now. Uh, it took him a while to kind of get comfortable, but I mean, now he's kind of one of the guys for sure. Yeah, I had never heard that story before. Um, 11 months into the year, I mean, kind of just looking at it like, hey, uh, the, the, what he said, he, he had never made it halfway through a season in his first four years. And I was like, no way. I told my parents that story and they, they started crying. And I was like, uh, it's kind of crazy because we kind of know him now. Uh, but when he tells that story to other people, it's like, yeah. I mean, the guy's crazy. The guy's been through so much. Uh, I don't see – you see why. I mean, he's, he does such a great job. So, of course. What was that? Sorry. Oh, oh yeah. Um, we're not really worried about that. I mean – I know the coaches will make sure we're prepared. So I kind of just leave that to them. We just kind of got to go out there and execute the, the play, whether they know it or not. So I'm not. No, I haven't looked into it a single bit. <laughs> I'm just kind of preparing like I usually do and making sure that everything um, goes the way it's supposed to. I mean, 14, 15 games in now, I'm kind of just doing the same thing that I've been doing. Um, and I think that's what uh, this team is doing a really good job of is making sure that we're not um, – making this game any bigger than it needs to be. So. Hey, Troy, you mentioned last week going out to eat with Michael and, and him you know, forgetting to bring his mask and people coming up to him. Do you see that happen to him a lot when you guys are out in public? Is that a regular thing? Yeah. How do you kind of see him handle oh, being, being a star? And kind of yeah. It, it for sure is a regular thing for him. I mean, just the times that I've been out with him, uh, I kind of see it, but I'm sure it's a lot worse. Um, then he, he tells us it, but yeah, I mean, he, he does a really good job of, of kind of, you know, just making sure that he, he stays humble through all that, you know, because a lot of guys can can get all that praise and kind of, you know, put it on himself and make and tell people that he's done it, but he does a really good job of, of shouting us all out. I mean, so yeah, I mean, he's just a humble guy and he, he, he that's just who he is. I know, you know one of the things coaches talk about with NIL is, is managing the locker room and you know, making sure that there aren't different feelings about what guys are getting paid and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. how, how have you guys handled that, or I guess maybe not had to handle it? Do you, do you feel like it affects things at all with the way things have gone with NIL? Um, I don't think it's affected our locker room too crazy. Um, because I think Montlake Futures and, and the coaching staff does a really good job of dispersing the, the collective throughout the team and making sure that everyone gets an opportunity to to kind of make whatever they want uh, through NIL. So, yeah, I don't think we've, we have had too much uh, trouble with it. But, of course, there's, there's always going to be some animosity no matter what. But um, I think guys are, are unselfish enough to kind of put that aside and make sure that that doesn't get in the way of, of, of winning games. From Adidas, like you say, I'll uh, probably this thing I got on right here. Like this, yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, I've, this is probably the the best jumpsuit they've given us. I like it because I don't really have too much white or whatever color this is in my in my closet. But it, yeah, I would say this is pretty cool. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Las Vegas. Yeah. Did you? On the Bay? Yeah, I was born in the Bay Area. I was born in Daly City. Oh, really? Awesome. Oh, okay. Very good Um, like I said before, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to realize, like where you're at until after. Because you're kind of just in the in the midst of all the chaos and, and what goes on during this game, but I mean, you, I grew up watching this game every Monday. I grew up 
dreaming about this game, and, and here we are. So uh, it, it's a really special moment. I'm just so glad that I, I get the opportunity and, and we get the opportunity to, to showcase what we got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, Dylan Johnson, I mean, that guy has stepped up so much, and, and the fact that he was able to kind of uh, gel with us as an O-line was, was really special, and we kind of had to establish that um, because we knew going into this year that, that everyone had watched the film last year. The thing about it last year was that not a lot of people had seen this offense uh, and the fact that they had a whole year's worth of film. Uh, we kind of knew that games weren't going to go like how they went last year, a couple of them at least. Uh, so, I mean, just being able to, to block for a guy like DJ and, and uh, everyone in that running back room and uh, was, was pretty special. So. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> all year we've been the underdog, man, and that's the position we want to be in. Um, I mean, some of my brothers here, we, we've been through a lot. These, especially these two, uh, with me as well, and we, we've always been counted out, no matter what it, what it was. Uh, so we're, we're not surprised that we're in the same position that we were in last week, and that we've been in all the big games that we play in. Uh, I just don't have many pairs of pants. It's kind of hard to find them growing up. <laughs> yeah, so that's been very difficult all my life. It doesn't, it hasn't been just recently. It's been all my life. So, yeah, most of the time in the cold, in the cold, in the hot, no matter what it is. I mean, I got a pair of pants on just because we have to. But, but yeah, most of the time I usually do. Of course. Thank you. Uh, shout out my boys, shout out Julius, shout out Nate for putting me on some swag. Those are my guys, my dogs. I've been up there the whole time. Bro, what is this? I did not know that. I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that we've kind of known from the beginning that we, we could be something special, uh, especially with Coach Huff. He, he does a really good job of coaching us and making sure that we're prepared for no matter what the situation, no matter who we're lined up against. But, um, but yeah, I mean, especially our D-line, they, they, they get us right, they, especially all year. I get to go against a guy that's going – in the first round, no matter how you look at it, Braylon Trice, I get to go against a guy like him every day. And iron sharpens iron. He makes me better, and I hope I make him better. And uh, I would just say that uh, that's why you come to UW is you get to go against top-tier talent. And not a lot of not a lot of people knew that we've got we had this team and that we had guys that we do. And uh, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, for us, he's, he has told us that, like, the playoffs started week one because as soon as you lose a game, you're out of it. You know what I mean? So the playoffs, we've been in the playoffs all year. Um, we've been we've looked at every game the same, and uh, we're going into this game really excited. Uh, that The 161 days is real, man. He's not lying. Uh, he always – he, it kind of seemed very far, but I mean, we're here now. We're about two days away from the game, and um, two more, <laughs> 159. We're, we're excited. I, I mean, like even Caleb will say, talking about there's also the one go one and zero approach too. So there's a yep. interesting blend there of having two mm -hmm. mindsets. Yep. That, it, it feels like from the outside a little bit, but yeah. Message, but how do you blend that? No, uh, 
if you ask Coach uh, Grubb, Coach Grubb had told us that um, he had met with uh, Coach Pete a couple of days before fall camp, and he had told us that Coach Pete had told him not to talk about the national championship. But the belief that Coach Grubb had in this group to uh, in the trust that he could put that and um, know that the group will respond maturely is 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 awesome. I mean, I, I wouldn't want how how they treated this year and last year and just the way that they approach everything. I mean, I wouldn't want it any other way. Those guys do a really great job of making sure that we're just prepared for any moment, no matter if it's this moment right now, me standing on this podium talking to you or or um, a fourth and one uh, play that in the national championship. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Those guys do a really good job of, of collaborating and just making sure that they're always on the same page so that uh, they can give us the right words. And, and so, yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of the guys still on the team, and a lot of the guys playing right now, um, other than a, a couple of transfers, we're, we, we're all recruited by Coach Pete. Um, I think that's what makes us all close, and I think that's what separates a lot of us is that we've been through a lot of adversity with three, three head coaches, and uh, we're still here, man. So, yeah. Hey. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so my freshman year, uh, my, my well, growing up, my parents they they played uh, they played volleyball. I mean, my dad played volleyball in high school. My mom played volleyball in high school. Uh, so they have a love for the game. My little sister plays vo uh, volleyball for college now. So volleyball was, was kind of rooted, you know, growing up. Uh, they've always talked about it. Uh, when I got to high school, um, there's it's not very common that there's uh, men's volleyball all throughout high school. But in Las Vegas and Nevada, there is. Uh, so the funny story is that our the freshman volleyball coach was actually our D-line coach for football. So what he did, he had went out and grabbed some of the, you know, some just – athletic guys I guess and and just threw us all in there and kind of just go have fun <laughs> we ended up doing really good that year I got bumped up to varsity I think and I kind of just uh grew a love for the game I mean it's really fun to play I was really out there just to just to play for fun and kind of just stay in shape for football season but I didn't realize how much it helped me and how much it um, kind of helped me with with the, with the footwork and just the explosiveness it, it takes to kind of jump over and over and over every single point, I guess. So, I mean, volleyball was, was a really awesome sport. There's there even some coaches trying to recruit me for volleyball, but my, my volleyball coach told them that I was a football player, so they were very disappointed. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't ever thinking about playing volleyball after high school, but I mean here and there I'll go back home and, and go in an open gym just to kind of get a sweat going and uh, stay active. But I mean, but yeah, it's a lot of people are surprised when I tell them I play volleyball because especially I I play offensive line, so it's it's weird for people to kind of visualize that. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Smell. It for sure does. Yeah. Fellas. <laughs> uh, I still have it, man. It still gives me nightmares. Uh, I think we just, Coach DeBoer emphasizes brotherhood and unity and just the love that we have for each other in that locker room is, is different. Um, that's what separates us. Uh, something that you don't really see too often is is like offensive linemen hanging out with DBs or quarterbacks hanging out with D linemen. It, it, it's weird. It's weird to see, but but it, that's what happens. That's what separates us on, on game days, that we have so much trust in each other, offensive side, defensive side, special teams. So, so yeah.
it was really easy to kind of come back and play for a guy that that preaches everything that you grew up, you know, valuing. So, so yeah. Talk to me a little bit about your upbringing. You know, you, you've gone all this way, and now you're here at the biggest stage of college football, and going to play for a 15 and 0 season. Talk to me about the individual that started college and that started playing football versus the individual that's sitting on the stage today. You know, uh, I would say the biggest difference is that. I never played offensive line until my sophomore year of high school. I grew up playing running back and fullback. So I would say that's probably the biggest difference. Uh, no, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, just over the years and being through, I mean, going through what I, what I went through and just with football and, and going through so many coaches and, you know, I just grew so much. And I think the, the biggest thing that I learned is, is just to stay patient, is that wait for your turn. Like, because your timing is not always the timing that, that, that's going to happen. You know, my first three years at UW, I didn't really play too much. And um, for me, it was really hard to kind of go through that. You know, it's, it, it's, it's really difficult for a lot of guys coming out of high school to go through something like that. It's, it's a reality check that, you know, you're, you're playing with – Everyone that everyone that you're playing with was the best on their team, and you kind of come together. It's it's kind of difficult for a lot of guys to kind of see, but I think that's what I'm preaching to a lot of the young guys is that you just got to wait your turn. I mean, the, the timing that you want everything wait, to happen the uh, isn't always the timing. So yeah. The Washington media of session. Five minutes remaining. Appreciate it. Of course. So I only lived in Daly City for a couple months. Uh, me and my family moved out. I actually moved to Washington for like five or six years. Um, we ended up moving to Salt Lake City, Utah for like six months. My mom hated it. Um, so then we ended up in Vegas in 2007. 2000, 2007, 2008, during that, that house marketing crash, uh, we got in really, really early. So we were able to find a, a home and we've just been in there ever since. Yeah, it's tough, man. End of an era. Who knows? It may come back. I don't know, but. How you doing? I would just say just to stay patient. I mean, uh, and just keep your head down and keep on working no matter what happens. Every day. I learned that in 2021, during that year that we went four and eight, uh, I wasn't playing too much. Um, you know, I would say there was a lot of things that were going on that I, I didn't have in control, and I had to learn very fast that, you know, I, I couldn't control those things. Like, uh, my parents kept telling me just to keep going. I mean, there was a lot of talks of me leaving and uh, me going somewhere else to play, but uh, eventually stuck it out, and, and I was patient. Four years, Four years later, I ended up, you know, starting a whole year, and I'm in my fifth year now. This is my second year starting. Uh, you know, I've been through a lot of coaches, a lot of um, teammates, and I think that was the biggest thing, just just to stay patient and wait your turn. So. According to you, which word would be the best the offensive line? Since your evolution year, so which word would describe it the best? Oh. Wait, can you repeat that? Sorry. Oh, um, I would just say brotherhood, man. I mean, it shows up on, on Saturdays, just the fact that we're so close and that we're so united as one, and that's what an offensive line needs to be. Like, we can't all be five individuals. That's how bad things happen. Um, we have to make sure that we all play and, and stay on the same page, and I think that's what shows up um, in games. and. And just having that trust in each other that we're all going to do our jobs. And at the end of the day, you got to play offensive line like offensive line is supposed to be played. And that's nasty and chippy and and um, just always on the attack. So. Speaking of your lineman teammates, uh, who would be the hardest worker according to you? The hardest worker? I would say all four of those guys, man. I can't pick. 
I mean, starting from the left guard, Nathaniel Colepo, that dude is a menace. And I tell you, you watch the film, that dude is looking to take heads off. Our center, Parker Burlesford, that dude does a really good job of just making sure that we're all on the same page. And, and if you ask any of those guys, Parker Burlesford, our center, he may be very undersized, but he's the best offensive lineman out of all five of us, man. And our right guard, Julius Below, my roommate, um, that dude is he, he's just savvy man you know he just knows the game of football he has a really high iq and 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 roger rosengard does a really good job of protecting michael's blind side he's the best offensive tackle in the country so i mean a lot of those guys you know we don't we don't get here by not working hard you know what i mean so um those guys push me every day that concludes today's media day for those members of the media who took transportation from the media hotel departures will begin shortly in the same location as drop-off Uh, man, we, we've always talked about being in places like this, being, having opportunities like this to, to kind of showcase what we've been working for, all, you know, pretty much all our lives, but uh, more specifically, ever since we've been here, that bond will never die. That bond will always continue to grow, we will continue to grow closer, and um, I'm just happy that you know, we were all able to stick around and, and kind of be in this, you know, this stage. So, yeah. I did, you know. There's a couple. There's a lot of talks. You know, my first three years at UW weren't always, you know. So, a lot of things didn't happen how I wanted it to happen. But um, I eventually stuck it out, um, just by the trust of, of God and, and my family. They they had given me a lot of good advice, and so here I am, man. I'm just excited that I'm still here and that I'm able to share these moments with with guys like Nate and Julius and and the rest of that 2019 class that stuck around. Thank you. I've heard a lot of these guys talking about how being an underdog has fueled you along the course of this season. How has that elevated you guys to a next level, to an opportunity where you're here competing for a national title? Yeah, I think just brought us closer together. Uh, we know we got those four walls. We know we got the locker room. So uh, we're, we're bonded like that. Nothing can stop us, honestly. Anything you want to tell the Washington faithful before you head out of here? Uh, go Huskies. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming out to the 2024 College Football Playoff National Championship Media Day. I hope you enjoyed listening in on all of the coaches and players. Make sure you stick around. Check out some of the fan activations. And if you do get a picture with the National Championship trophy or you're running the 40-yard dash, use the hashtag CFB Playoff. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Fans, don't forget to join us all weekend for Playoff Fan Central. Playoff Fan Central, located right here at the George R. Brown Convention Center, offers a wide array of family-friendly entertainment and interactive experiences that will put you right in the middle of the action as we celebrate the pinnacle of the college football season. Admission is free. Just download the CFB Playoff mobile app on